pizza. One of the times that I ate pizza. Go ahead and tell the story. Now we're recording now. So go ahead and keep telling the story. What story am I telling? Is it, is it me? Oh, oh my Dustin. God. Now you got freaking the Green Goblin <laughs> in the back right there. Oh, that's my friend. It's my homie, Will. Big, big Willie style is what we call him on the streets. Oh, uh, AJ, yeah. uh, should I make my background the uh, the scoop, scoop a picture? Scoop a Steve? Yes. <laughs> oh, Scuba Jones is that what, is that what you're referring to? Uh, Scuba Jones. What let me let me. Adam Sandler knockoff is that? For honestly, for like the guy's mm-hmm. first year on Ghost Town, first year back. Not to say that he like he was really creative in Carnival, but you know, Ghost Town is obviously a different type of entity. It's its own little like realm, like you dark, creepy, foggy. You know, you can get away with a lot of like funnier shit in carnival but he pulled it off like he did some shit out there <laughs> that does that didn't necessarily belong out there but it just fucking worked like um have we talked have we talked about his shenanigans about vincent no. oh, about, unless, uh, unless, unless you've done it on a solo podcast but i don't think so fucking shen- okay first of all vincent's haunt name is not shenanigans anymore it's pizza time pizza time because every time for like almost a whole week throughout the run, like sca- like scattered here and there, but there I, would I, never not be a at, least, on, on at least twice, twice a week. Yeah, How for many, sure. Okay, let's let's start with this. How many times did you watch Spider-Man 2 that year? <laughs> uh, zero, actually. <laughs> How did that all start? Like what, the, the origin of the first pizza box. What happened? Um, so... It was it so literally the the very first one uh it was um I was just walking through Ghost Town and I guess was like hey you want pizza and I was like okay sure so I took it and I like was like I I took it and I was walking and she gave it to me right at the uh she where was it I think it was right by Sarah Marshall's house so like she had just turned the corner from like the the little funnel cake thing and there was like a pizza in it. And so I took it and I was like, awesome, cool. I got pizza. I can't have this. So I I went and I turned down Fog Alley and it just so happened that uh, our cast leads, Ryan and Kyle were right there. So I had it in my hand and I took it, handed it to Ryan. And I was like, here you go. Handed it to him. Went and I did a lap. And then I'm walking back down, down Fog Alley and they're still over there. And they like grabbed me and they pulled me to the side, like in the corner. They're like, you the one that handed me. Or, uh, I was like, did you hand this to him? I was like, yeah, why? He's like, see, I told you. And I was like, I don't want it. Take it. I'm like, I, I, I can take it back backstage. He's like, I don't care what you do with it. So get rid of it. it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that, that <laughs> verbatim what he said. He's like, I don't care. Just get rid of it. I was like, all right, cool. So I took it backstage and had some had some pizza. Straight that's, my my reaction. I don't care what you do, just get rid of it. <laughs> that's usually like if you have a good cast lead, if it's something that's not like paramount or detrimental to like a guest or to talent or to scary farm in general, <laughs> it's literally just like, I don't care what's it still doing here <laughs> like get it out because <laughs> if somebody else sees it then it could become a problem so i, I think it. what makes this season of shoot the shit the best is our formula it always starts off with haunt shenanigans then we get into like haunt stuff and then we get into like news pop culture stuff and then story time it's, it's just a good speaking formula. of haunt shenanigans uh do you like my background i do uh, I, I, not a lot oh, needs to be explained dude. here that's the uh, okay I'll, I'll let you take the lead on this one so one of the many hop out of the way <laughs> like one of the best nights we've had well usually it, when when it's pouring rain we tend to like we'll be out there for a little bit and sometimes we'll get pulled off streets because it's it's coming down just for like an hour or so until it stops that been like uh, two or three times last year huh yeah so the first weekend it happened dustin got this idea he's like he, like it he said it like anybody who had heard it it would have been like, oh, okay, yeah, he's just fucking around because he mentions like, I'm just gonna buy like a, like a snorkel set and like goggles and the rains next week. I'm just gonna go swimming in, in Calico. And you're like, ah, yeah, sure, okay, whatever. Uh, the following weekend comes and it's the second weekend it's raining, and 
we get pulled off streets. Oh no, we don't get pulled off streets. I'm about to leave on break. Everyone else is on break. Um, and then suddenly I just hear from like coming down from fucking cruise nest. It's time. It's time. It's time, baby. It's time. And he's like running full sprint and it's starting to come down. And so he like, we're like, what the fuck? What's going on? He rips open his fucking hot box and he pulls out a fucking snorkel set with goggles and the, the snorkel. Um, he forgot the floaties. But he's like, I'm going, I'm going swimming. I'm going swimming in Calico. And so uh, <laughs> and I were about to head out. And so we're like, all right, we'll, we'll walk we'll walk with you. We'll, we'll see fucking course. We're going to watch this shit. It's fucking hilarious. Uh, and we go out through first aid. So it's like right by Ghost Rider exit. And we're running. And I'm scaring people. I'm like watching Dustin having fun. And fucking like, I just hear, hey, help. And it's Dustin. He's not doing any type of like voice or anything. He doesn't usually, but like I can hear the concern in his request of help. And Leisha and I both stop because we both hear it. And he's like, "We're like, what's up?" He's like, "Just can you? What if you guys like hold me? Can you both hold me? Just make sure I don't run into anybody." We're like, "Oh yeah, we, we got you." And in my mind, I'm like, he knows that we're both around, so we're not gonna let anything happen. But for him, he was so concerned that he was asking us to like hold, literally hold on to him. And it just didn't register. So we're running, like having fun, just checking on him every now and then. And he's like kind of passively, aggressively, <laughs> like asking us to like fucking help him because he can't see <laughs> shit. And it gets worse because we make it down to Ghost Rider entrance and we take that left into Fog Alley. And even with like the fog, the rain, the blue light is just blue everywhere yeah and i hear him go oh fuck oh shit oh fuck and i'm like what he's like i really can't see can one of you guys just like take my hand it's scary down here and i'm like okay and so i like i put my arm my hand on his arm and i'm guiding him and we're like kind of indiana jonesing it we're just bombing through we just realize we don't want to get caught um it's already a dangerous situation and we're like shit like okay we just need to get this done so we're gonna make a left at the windmill we're gonna go up to the by the by the gun shop and go back through a2 and i lose leash i just kind of grab onto dustin and just steer him in whatever direction i can see that he can get through faster and he's just going off about like sea life and like how calico underwater is like a jip and like nobody should pay for you know (laughs) or whatever he's saying some shit and I, i'm like having fun we make that turn at the windmill i see brandon gaslin and he is one of our like supervisors he's one of the one of the people one of the team part of the team that oversees haunt nightly and i'm like fuck he like saw us he looked right at me as i'm like holding this like old man with goggles and a snorkel <laughs> trying to fucking move him around and I'm like okay shit like we gotta go we gotta run and we bolt, we, I kick open the door to A1, I throw Dustin through and Pasta looks up from her phone to see both of us as we do this. And I'm like, oh shit. And I like, I turn to Dustin who still has the fucking goggles on and he's yelling about like fucking Calico underwater, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Dustin, he's still yelling. He's fucking going up. I'm like, Dustin, take that shit off. He's like, I ain't taking shit off. What are you talking about? Like, that's pasta. He's like, shit. (laughs) Takes the snorkel off and we get back to our tent. Pasta and Brandon are there and we're like, oh, fuck. Like, are they going to talk to us? Leash ends up coming right behind after us and she's like you guys are fucking idiots <laughs> they're like what and she's like well brandon saw both of you turn that turn into towards a1 and he looked at me and just went just go go back don't go back because fortunately for us at that point in time they were pulling us off streets because it was raining so we got lucky on that one yeah. um and that's just one of like the big one of the big ones that he, dustin's man he's he managed to go into three different mazes this year. Origins, which was kind of set up that way, like we were all, we were told that if they needed some support, we'd be able to go in there for an hour. Uh, he was in Pumpkin Eater, which was kind of the one that was out there, but no more out there than <laughs> um, Waxworks, which Vincent actually got to witness this. I did, um, I was a guest that night. It worked out perfectly. <laughs> Um, because the way it all started, Dustin went up to, to Ryan and was like, Hey, is it okay, is it okay if I go in the maze, um, tonight? That'd, that'd be kind of cool. And Ryan's like, all right, cool. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. And I'm not sure if Dustin did this on purpose, 
or if he just kind of just didn't think and it just worked out. But he just said maze. He never specifically stated which maze or like origins, which was the maze that we could go, we were allowed to. Um, and he Dustin, really Dustin knew what he was doing. <laughs> Dustin knew exactly what the fuck he was doing. I'm just trying to be candid. Um, but he he knew what he was doing. So he was like, I, I need to go and get a bee, beekeeper costume. And he tells one of our like time card coordinators, who's I guess technically one of one of our leads. Um, he's like, hey, I'm going into Waxworks. I, I need like a, a costume for to, to go in. And he's like, okay, sure. Takes in the wardrobe. He gets a beekeeper helmet. He gets this like fucking like safari hat that has this mesh netting that comes down around his neck. And uh, Ryan had told him to meet him or one of either Kyle or Ryan over at A1 uh, when it was time. And it was, it was time. <laughs> oh. Fucking Dustin walks up with his full on ghost town costume, his mask, this old fucking man mask with this beekeeper hat and meshing around his head mm-hmm. and he just walks up to Kyle and says, I'm ready. And Kyle looks at him and says, for fucking what? Where are you going? <laughs> He's like, well, I talked to Ryan. He said I was, I was going to go into to Waxworks tonight. And he's like, what the fuck? Like, what are you, what are you talking about? No, you're, you're going into Origins. He's like, oh. And I think Dustin laid it on pretty pretty heavy on this one. He like, kind of did the whole like, oh, well, okay, I guess. And so, <laughs> fuck it. I guess Kyle was like, all right, fuck it, dude. Like, you met, you met me 80% of the way. Mm-hmm. You got the whole so let's go ahead and see what I can do. And so he radios Waxworks and says, you know, do you guys need an extra talent for an hour? And they say, yeah, uh, we just need a minute. Uh, we'll send someone to go pick him up. And Kyle's just like, all right, you're good to go. They'll be here in like X amount of minutes. Um, so go and fuck around. Oh, God, no. For, for, the, for the time being. So Dustin ran out with the whole beekeeper helmet. And he did probably one of the best fucking bits that I've ever, that I feel like I've seen throughout all of Haunt. However, I for sure think uh, from last season, one of the best bits. Uh, he's over by the barbecue. So the barbecue across from the gun shop. Yeah. And you know that tr- that planner with the tree? Yeah. On the planner, he's like using his, um, his fucking pickaxe or scythe or whatever, wraith or whatever. He has a little sickle. He's a little, he's a little, the sickle for the sickle tickle. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of batting away and he's like all right guys all right folks all right ladies and gentlemen everyone you know i need you guys to give us some space here we have an active beehive i need you guys to be careful please step back you know five feet be careful active beehive and this guest comes up and he's like are you serious and just walks right up to dustin after his little spiel and dustin stops and slowly turns to this dude and goes does it look like I'm fucking joking? And he like holds his <laughs> fucking mesh. He's like, I am a beekeeper. I am certified to do this. So you need to step back. <laughs> and then finally, um, the TC from uh, Waxworks comes over, picks up Dustin. He goes in, and uh, Vincent, go ahead. And, and this is this is all you, bud. I I mean I don't know how well you guys. No, hold on. He's well, got we're a gonna video. Figure... What oh, okay. I have? Yeah, I have a video. Yeah, let me set it. Let me set it to you, because you can probably. You want to put that in post? Yeah, you can. You can put it in post. Oh, and, okay. And, like, hyperlink so, it. Insert oh. video like right below, right like, there, right, right next to Vincent. Right It'd be right next to Vincent, like right there on the side. Bam, right there. And something, that way something that way. Something right, yeah, that way exactly. Um, did, all the way. <laughs> that, that was funny. You know, I don't know what's going on really, but I'm pretty sure I'll probably laugh when I'm editing this. Oh, so it's... did you <clears throat> did you like what did, was it your first time going through that maze on your night off? And then you were like, wait a minute, was that Dustin? Then did you go back in or no? Oh, so we were uh, my girlfriend Ashley and I were uh, walking through Ghost Town, and uh, we decided to take a little break uh, over by the the Indian, and we so we sat on the little bench right there. And uh, we're just hanging out, you know, watching everyone else do their thing. And uh, Allie comes up, one of the saloon girls. She comes up and she's like, going to Waxworks right now. I'm like, why? She's like, Dustin's in there. I'm like, Dustin's in there. I was like, okay, that's weird, but sure. <laughs> like, why not? And so we're just, we're walking in there and, you know, we, we get through the maze. I was like, huh, I wonder where Dustin is. I wonder where Dustin is. And then we get to the beekeeper room. And I was like, uh, cause, oh, because Ali was like, oh, yeah, like he's, he's a beekeeper. I was like, OK, cool. So we walk in and 
I get really sad because I see like the normal like waxworks beekeeper there, right? And I'm like, oh, dude, we must have missed them, or like we're, we're too early. Um, I'm like, oh, like they they switched casts already, right? And so like we're I take like a step in, and I'm recording just preemptively because I'm like, all right, like I want to see it, I want to see this thing. Yeah. And I like I hear something behind me, and I turn around, and Dustin's on top of the table, like one hand on the wall, one fucking hand sickle, just like just like, oh yeah, baby, let's go. It. Just fucking just all in. It was it's amazing. It was just, and then oh. I was like. You know, I I had to I had to hype the boy up, but yeah, it was it was awesome. It was that, great. Uh, yeah, I, if I if I didn't have to cover so much haunts during haunt season, I would be there every single fucking weekend in a heartbeat. It's it's like it's like a ten second video. So perfect. And also, it's the fiftieth anniversary for haunt for Scary Farm this year. So where where does your loyalty lie? I go to I uh, go to as well as lies, I, don't even start that shit. Them a media pass. I fucking I spend so <laughs> much money a season because I don't have a season pass to not scary farm. I spend so much more money at that haunt more than any other haunt every season. I yeah, I don't see that anymore, man. I have a feeling that they are just not coming back. Well, I mean, they are, they're back. It's just you have to have an actual pass to have it as an extension. That's the only way you can get it. So I don't even. I don't even think that's a that's a thing right now. Yeah, I, th- I, I think at this at this point in time, it's my belief that there is zero scary farm pass. They they want to maximize that profit for the fiftieth baby. That's, make up that's how you year. maximize it. You know how many they diehard fans will fucking... last year. <laughs> they did great last year. Attendance numbers were through the roof. If the roof was underground, yeah, there goes my media. <laughs> <laughs> oh come on. It was odd. Like there was just the lull at eleven on a Friday. Was I weird. I had a love hate relationship for it. You know. Yeah. Like at the beginning, I think um, I don't speak on behalf of like Vincent or any other monsters. Like at first, it was tight because it was like, all right, cool. I'm not like trying to like hustle around and get everyone and give you know everyone a fucking magical memory. But then also it's just like, well, fuck. I kind of missed that. It made like time go by faster. It made it a lot more fun. Um. I feel like for for me, it it like definitely the time thing, like it made the night go by faster. So like, I was like, I felt like this year I'd be like, you know, I'd go do like three or four laps and be like, all right, cool. Like it's been about a half an hour and then I go check a clock and it's like, it's been five minutes. I'm like, what is happening here? It's been five minutes. Oh man. Now I, I I would say I, you know, and I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. I, I loved it in the beginning because for me to do what I do, you know, and, and for other photographers and videographers to do what they do and capture the moments on camera, it was nice to have a little bit of kind of like, in a way, your own, your own, your kind of your own set, because it was like, you guys were running around, there wasn't a lot of people walking around. So I had the opportunity to catch a little bit more than I want, uh, like one on one, you know, that more than I can. Um, yeah. It was great for the mazes, because I got to catch a lot more details with mazes as far as filming goes. My only uh, the thing I hated about it, though, is what makes a lot of these videos so good is the guest reactions. And I had very little of that with knots. They're just over it. <laughs> well, that was, a, that was the thing is that like the guests would get there. Right. And normally what we call it, the turn is when just the crowd goes from being really super cool, awesome to yeah. being like, I am so over this. I want to go home. I am tired. And like, so that turn would normally happen like at about like 1130, like midnight, like that's, that's about when like people were kind of like, all right, like I've seen, I've came what I've seen to see, needed, needed to see, and, you know, done everything that I kind of wanted to do. And I'm just hanging out at this point yeah. Well, because, you know, like there wasn't anyone there, guests would get there and they would finish all the mazes by like eight thirty, nine o'clock. Yeah. And yeah. so like the turn would happen at like nine o'clock and then so like from nine o'clock on it was just kind of like weird interactions with guests where like they would either be like kind of meh about you or they just be like super angry and like yeah just kind of like i'm over this <laughs> no i agree 100 percent. um yeah there was a different vibe between 22 and 19 that's that's the last time i could say i had a a really fun time at scary farm um and you know, like that vibe right there. I mean, that you're you're talking two different eras at that point. You're talking pre-COVID and, and post-COVID. 
you know. Yeah. So it, it's it's really you know it 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 really is interesting to see how much an audience has changed from those points, you know, and and how much people are are going to these events and how much people are not going to these events, how much are actually diehard fans and all that. You're starting to see that kind of shift and change uh, yeah. going into you know this year. So this year, it, it, you know, with it being the fiftieth and and with it having tons of marketing and they're already hyping it up on social media as it is as we speak um i'm hoping for a bigger audience cap i'm hoping for a lot of fans to come out and celebrate the 50th and i'm hoping for you know a lot of people who are ready to hang it up you know they have a fucking phenomenal year uh for those who are starting up again another year and they want to keep going this is another year to add to their belt but it's a special year it's the 50th uh and then for those who are coming in uh for the first time ever i uh, hope you guys have the best night of your, the best nights of your life because uh the 50th only comes once in a lifetime it's, yeah. <laughs> and it's crazy to think that like in like 50 years 50 years like it's survived a lot yeah. i feel like um yeah especially after the pandemic like it rocked the pandemic rocked everything like nobody knew how and a lot has changed besides you know like uh, attendance at a theme park but like it so far as far as we know is doing well um i i i think it's could be prospering better than it is now but it's still doing really well yeah and it's kicking i'm stoked to be to be able to have like my, my last year on the 50th anniversary um there's a lot of people that are trying to jump in for the 50th to have their 50, their first year be the 50th which is also like you had said it like that's fucking sick that's awesome um it's just i i don't know like i'm i don't know what to expect and it scares me <laughs> oh man that's how i felt going into monday night raw yeah. i got after a 10 minute mark uh, on zoom what the fuck i didn't pay the bill that's cool uh oh it's okay uh oh We'll you guys have nine out. minutes and 50 seconds to talk about wrestling. Go. All right. Fuck Vince McMahon. If I watch SmackDown tomorrow and it's actual dog shit like Monday Night Raw, I'm going to punch orphaned children in the fucking face. Well, <laughs> you better get your boxing gloves on because I had heard news that Vince McMahon is running the show tomorrow. Either if he's physically there or virtually. You take... The, the the most top guy, the most over that any fucking wrestler has ever been in years. And you you don't make him win the big one. I can, okay, I can kind of see where you're going with that. Whatever, it sucks. It should have been at WrestleMania, but we'll, we'll progress. And then you have, yes, Vincent. I don't know anything about what you're talking about. I can make inferences, <laughs> but... I'm assuming that you're talking about the blonde guy. Yeah. Who, yes. Ro Roman Reigns. So no, Roman. Yes. Roman Reigns won. And that's Roman. why that's why you're upset. Not necessarily. I'm upset with what happened on Monday. I, okay. I, I was upset because he's not he's not the dog I wanted to win in that fight. Okay. Um, but for Roman Reigns' character, he's had the the their their world title for well, from, from my understanding, it's controversial because it was like a Vince did this to boost Roman Reigns' legacy. Kind of, because he's he's held that world title for 948 days, I think now. It was like to make him the longest or, or some something wrong yeah, with those lines. Make him the longest reign. They want to break a thousand. And so yeah. if he had lost, it would have we wouldn't have achieved that. And then you'd have to start over with a new a new wrestler. Um so I can see where okay, give give Roman Reigns that because as a bad guy or a heel. For story I hope he loses at 9.99, and I hope they like the headline is Roman Reigns ends. Or... I hope it's his day, his fucking day off. I hope he's just fucking shopping at Target, and some dude just rolls up with a referee <laughs> and says "you" and just beats the shit out of him and takes his title. Like it's not even televised. It's not on Raw, SmackDown, not not a pay per view event. It's just, it's just what is that know. like a like a 24 hour belt thing? That's that's, that's like a, that's a thing, right? There was, it was it was a thing was and then a they thing. recently scrapped it why why would they do that why it why had... why don't we just buy one for haunt and to see who ends up with it by the end of haunt um pumpkin we never did that this year right what 
uh, wasn't Red going to buy like a pumpkin and we were going to like pass the pumpkin around ghost town? I don't know. I, I didn't hear, I, I, there's a probably a reason why I didn't hear about it specifically, but um, I'm not sure about this year. I kind of want to get a 50th, well, Dustin brought up. Oh, the no, 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 I'm sorry. It wasn't a pumpkin. Uh, Michael, uh, we took his dynamite <laughs> and we were playing like hot potato with his dynamite. Is that is that, was that why he was like asking people, where's my dynamite? Yeah, <laughs> because he had no clue where it was. Like scratching his head all like, I'm like, God, dude, he had a really sick face. He had a really good mask. And between him and Dustin being like the creepy old grandpas, that was fucking I like their dynamic. It was I'm excited, good. I'm excited to see uh, what this year brings for both of them. Because I know that, I know for sure Dustin wants to do something a little different. I've heard, I haven't seen anything. I, I think he's actually talking to Jesse uh -huh. soon about getting his mask made. Um, I'm not sure if he wants me to like tell it publicly, so I'm not going to say, but yeah. from what I've heard, it's going to be really fucking cool and fits him perfectly. We're getting behind the scenes. Definitely. Here. What? So we're getting behind the scenes here? A little bit, not too much because I don't know if he wants me. I can text him and see if he wants me to talk about. Ah, he probably doesn't want me to talk about. But I right, sorry, go back to wrestling talk. I didn't mean to to die. Yeah, no, no worries. Um, so wrestling, basically, the storyline between Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns, cultivating at um, WrestleMania, Roman wins. I get it. You want him to have that big push, that big like historic record. Yeah. All right. I get that. So the following Monday and everyone talks, it, it's called um, uh, Raw After Mania. And like it's where wrestlers have debuted. Uh, sometimes championships change hands. Uh, just really big e expectations for this specific Raw after the WrestleMania because WrestleMania is like the Super Bowl. Um, and Cody comes out, confronts Roman Reigns, uh, blah, blah, blah. I want to fight you and your fucking your henchman so solo sokoa who is part of the bloodline which is their group um and Samoan uh, dynasty exactly okay uh, Samoans. um and paul Heyman comes up with this this you know okay we'll, we'll face you in a tag team but your partner has to be somebody that has i thought he was with brock does he does he change sides brock comes we're getting out there and... we're getting there i'm sorry i didn't mean to jump the, jump the shark Brock comes out and is he basically solidifies himself as Cody's partner for that night. And it's like hype. As soon as the music hits, like it's just everyone. How do so you think I felt when I was there? Like hearing that music, I would shit my pants for one of two reasons. Uh, because Brock Lesnar's there and there's a chance that he might beat the shit out of me. Um, and I'm scared. There's not but a I'm chance. Also, he's just going to do it. He's just going. He's going to unhinge his jaw and eat you whole. He's just going to suplex uh, you after suplex until you're done and then hit you with the F5 and, and you're fucking done. done. Fucking wine and dine you, take you out. Kamara lock. <laughs> and he's gonna drive you home. Yeah. And he's gonna you get to your to your door. Yeah. Um, but uh so it's 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 set. And then throughout the whole raw episode, not not many really big booms went off. Usually it's like a returning superstar, you know, that's been gone for a while. They have something in the works to make it like, like really hype up the crowd there. Nothing. The matches were changed on the fly. Uh, segments were taken completely off, and this was all because of Vince McMahon. Uh, Vince McMahon took over, and is, he had his whole scandal um, paying Mike. He came back with a mustache. He did. Looks he, awful, he, doesn't it? <laughs> it looks god off. I watched that press conference that morning. It was fucking. I was like, okay, fucking Endeavor's gonna Died buy fucking, Aaron shit. <laughs> Endeavor's gonna buy fucking WWE. They're merging with UFC. This is gonna be a great thing. Turn on, the, turn on the video. First thing I see is stupid Vince McMahon. I'm like, you look god fucking awful. Who gave you this idea yeah. to dye your fucking mud? Okay, who gave you this idea to fucking grow a mustache, dye that, and then dye your... Dude, we all know your hair's gray, bro. You're not fucking fooling everybody. You're fucking in your mid-70s. How old is he, 77? I'm like, you look like a pedophile version of Walt Disney. You look like you have a van full of fucking candy, bro. You do. Um, anyway, so the whole issue is because since... That scandal, Vince has been out of the limelight. Uh, Triple H was the, the the boss, right? He was the boss. He was taking over creative. He was creating these really, really phenomenal storylines. And everyone knows, like, oh, everyone's saying, like, oh, well, don't you know that wrestling's, you know, fake? Like, yeah, but so is porn. Do you really think she's trying to get you off? Like, relax. But the storylines, the structures, the, the the time that they put into it, and how it all just kind of unravels and makes sense. So hold on, what you're saying is that Vince took Triple H's job, 
essentially back. He was but, the he was, he was the he took your job. basically, okay. and he basically was taking what Triple H had either planned, set up, uh, was going to deliver, and changed it all. Um, the the finish for the main event, which was Brock Lesnar and Cody Rhodes versus the Bloodline, Roman and Solo, uh, turned into like as they're announcing Cody, like right after they announced Cody. Brock Lesnar just starts beating the shit out. He starts wiping the fucking arena with Cody. He sends him through tables. He starts throwing him through fucking barricades. He, oh, they they the gave shit. him the old Julius Caesar. Absolutely, yeah. The, the good old... Um, they gave the him a good, good old, old fuck you for starting AEW. 2014 Dustin Willis. He gave it to him. Um, <laughs> and it was just... It makes no sense um, if they were going to... They pretty much stifled any type of momentum Cody could have gained after his loss from WrestleMania. And it's just like, all right, now you're going to be fucking beefing with Brock Lesnar. We don't know why he did this, but he did. So there you go. You're not, did you not, did you not catch what they're doing here though? Are they going to make him go for another year? Like, like building? I think this is what they're doing. Uh, You know what? You know what I think they're doing? I got one minute to say this before we fucking (laughs) end. They're re- they're recycling a fucking storyline. They're just putting Cody in the fucking mix. Which storyline? John Cena losing to The Rock and then fighting Brock Lesnar. And then the next year they fought for the fucking championship at WrestleMania and John Cena came well, out victorious. I don't know, but... I've seen it before. I mean, Have we really gotten to a point in wrestling... Everyone is talking about wrestling right now. So, like, in terms of, like, publicity, it's it's getting up there. You yeah, know I mean? and, like, I get it. I just... Hold that thought! Bam! I just want... I just want a con- consistent storyline to not end with Roman winning. Um, I know that we're probably not going to get that for a few months until he breaks a thousand days as champion um but it just it's it's fucking it's vince's like overwhelming like boner he has for these big dudes and like big matches and it's like well we're gonna have we're gonna have brock go out there we're gonna have him fucking just grab cody's dick and twist it and we're, it's gonna be it's gonna be hot it's gonna be great it's gonna be great for tv and, da, 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 da. Oh and it's God. not oh my God. really fucking not good for tv it's the same shit repackaged it's this fucking like this idea he has that he knows what's good for wrestling, but wrestling has kind of evolved. It's changed. It's got a whole new fan demographic. Um, and they're not appealing to everyone. They're appealing to a certain type of people that are don't make up the majority. Yes. Uh, why is everyone obsessed with Rhea Ripley? Because she is mammy. <laughs> Simple as that. That's why I bought the t-shirt. It says... She is my mammy. Buddy. <laughs> Buddy, you're going to take one look at a match and just go. Buddy. <laughs> Have you seen any of her matches? You've seen pictures of her, yes? I've seen pictures of her. Okay. Listen, you, hey, not, only, not only have I seen all of her matches because I've been following her career since she fucking broke into WWE in that fucking tag team tournament. Gotcha, yeah. Over at but the- I fucking, yeah. I've watched her evolve. Are you and- know what's funny? I, ha- I have only ever seen her... For like the past probably month, she's been like on she... TikTok and, and social media and whatnot. And I've only ever seen her looking how she looks, like obviously now. But like I think it was like a couple days ago, I saw something that, that was like uh, it was like ah, oh, Rhea Ripley like through the years like, and it showed like her like evolution into what this is. Yeah. And I'm like, wow, you look different. <laughs> wow, you it, look different. It's the thing is, is I have a buddy of mine whose type is toxic women <laughs> um and she just looks the part i'm not saying she's toxic at all but she just looks like i would ask her to power bomb me through a table and thank her as she does it she's from the uk yes yes no australia australia she could spit on me and i would fucking be like i'm not worthy i need her <laughs> I need her to call me a pussy. <laughs> I need her. And I would take it. Like, yes, man. I'd be like, you are right. <laughs> this woman has blown up on the internet recently. I'll be honest with you. Um, like, I feel like she could pick me up and hold me. And like, she can. 
thing, like it'll be okay. She could straight up fucking just lift you like this. And for a moment, I can be vulnerable. <laughs> you would just see AJ like this the whole time. Yeah, I'd go catatonic. <laughs> just get in the fetal position and just. Oh, just stay away from. Yeah, Rhea is is amazing. Okay, so let me let me tell you how the weekend went down for me. Um, mind you, I've been rate I've been waiting for WrestleMania since the moment I found out they were building SoFi Stadium. I was like, WrestleMania is going to take over that stadium, and I'm going to go to it. I'm not going to miss it. This is going to be something I've been wanting to do since I was a kid, and I'm going to do it. Fast forward to WrestleMania 38, which was in Dallas, Texas last year, which was probably the last greatest WrestleMania. It was okay. <laughs> I mean, you had Stone Cold fighting, bro. It was pretty good. I'm, I'm more for like this. Let's leave nostalgia where it was. Yeah. Um, WrestleMania 39, man. The weekend starts off, uh, rolls in Friday Night SmackDown, followed by the Hall of Fame 2023. Um, I wanted to do this because, for one, I've never seen a Hall of Fame in person. So I was like, I have to see a Hall of Fame in person at least once. Was it the best lineup for the Hall of Fame? Probably not. But at least I got to see a Hall of Fame, and I got to see Rey Mysterio get inducted. Rey Mysterio was probably part of all of our childhoods. So um, if you weren't trying to do a 619 or fucking jump off the couch onto somebody, then who really were you? You know? Um, so, you know, I, I take uh, I take Matt with me. Um, Anyone knows Matt? He's on Ghost Town. Um, and we go to... What happened? QMA. Yeah. QMA. QMA. Uh, anyway. QMA. Uh, anyway. Um, so we go and, you know, we're all excited, man. We're both wearing Rhea shirts. You know, we, I, I, we leave around 1 o'clock because they just opened the, the Superstore there. Uh, so we wanted to go see all that. They had a bunch of cool memorabilia there. Um, Eddie's low rider was there. That was dope to see. Um, a lot of WrestleMania 21, uh, memorabilia the last time they were in Hollywood. Um, so that was cool. Uh, Cody Rhodes stuff How was on display. Do like come here? Um, it, it's not, they come about at least once or twice a year, but yeah. the fa- thing is, I think is because we didn't have a stadium. Yeah. Um, so so they were waiting to do a uh, WrestleMania in Los Angeles again. They were just waiting for the right time and the right time came around. So essentially you gotta, you gotta look at it this way. WrestleMania is the Super Bowl of wrestling. Why? Because this is just the biggest event that it, it was there. when it first was launched. Nothing of this scale was ever done. And they had like territories of wrestling. So yeah. To, like, Midwest, you go deep south, they have their own different wrestlers and all that. Uh, by the time the first WrestleMania had come to fruition, Vince McMahon Sr. He he fought. ruled all the territories. And they were all under one con- conglomerate, I guess is the word. Yeah, so this was a massive, this brought all the wrestlers that, no matter where you were in the world, if you grew up watching wrestling locally, all your wrestlers were going to be at this pay-per-view. And the, it, there was dream matches like Hulk Hogan, who was that first WrestleMania? It was Hulk Hogan and Mr. T versus uh, Roddy Piper. Yeah, dude. Like, this was like, these are dream matchups, man. You never saw anything to this. Andre the Giant, Ric Flair, you know, Ultimate Warrior. All these guys were coming in, and you're just like, what the fuck? Like, yeah, this is awesome. In your own territory. So, like, if you, if you were a fan of Midwest wrestling, you wouldn't be able to see Midwest wrestling unless it was with the WWE. Yeah. And so that's kind of what drew everyone to WrestleMania, made it the big extravagant extravagant event that it was and then it just kind of grew it just got bigger and bigger every single year this was this is where you where the biggest feuds came to to fruition this is where you saw a lot of the dream matchups you never thought you were going to see this is where all that stuff happens you know you know you got iconic matches like undertaker versus Shawn michaels you got undertaker versus rick flair you know you got Fucking um, Bret Hart versus Owen Hart. That, uh, Bret Hart. Hart versus Owen Hart. You know, family yeah. versus family, man. You know, you got fucking The Rock versus Hulk Hogan. Stone Cold versus The Rock, dude. I mean, the list goes on of so many great matches that happened at this event um, that go down in history. The Undertaker's undefeated streak up until WrestleMania 30, man. Like, that was huge. You know, so to see you know this is like the super bowl man this is where everyone comes this is the biggest event of the year for wrestling in general and in the, in the in the sport of professional wrestling this is where every wrestler dreams to be at um 
And, you know, it was great, dude. I mean, we walked in. I, I had never been to SoFi Stadium, so that was awesome. Uh, to see what that looked like, that was really cool. I mean, it's it's massive, this stadium. And the way it's built and everything was really cool. So night one, you know, night one and night two. Let me tell you this before we go into this. Night two should have been the better night on paper. Yeah. However, on paper, you know, it was it was the stacked card. It had the best matches. However, night one was way better in person than it was night two. Uh, night one just had such great matches leading all the way to the main event of a very emotional match that's been a storyline going on for literally a year um, of the bloodline and Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, these two uh, guys who came up together in you know the Canadian scene and whatnot, um, came up together like brothers and took on the Usos and beat them. And they, they were the longest reigning tag team champions of all time. And they dethroned them at WrestleMania. And it was just an emotional night. It was such a great night. Um, it was awesome. You know, I, I've never been around so much energy in my life that I was just, I mean, you can still hear it in my voice. I am still recovering from this weekend. I was screaming my fucking head off, dude. It was, it was awesome. I was fucking jumping up and down. Like I was filled of energy, man. You know, night two comes around, fucking edge comes out to a little slayer. I'm fucking, I immediately flip switches. I'm like, oh, we're not at WrestleMania no more. We're at a fucking slayer concert and we're about to open a fucking mosh pit right now, hmm. you know? And, you know, that was awesome just to hear that. Not to mention, you know, I got to do all of this with my best friend sitting three rows down. Um, you know, Sammy had came out to uh, to do WrestleMania weekend as well because his brother-in-law um, is marrying his sister in a few months. And so they treated this as like the bachelor party, um, which – if I was getting married and I, you know, I'm a huge wrestling fan and like I am, I would fucking be like, this is the best bachelor party ever. No one's going to top this shit. This is awesome. Um, so, you know, night two, we, uh, we moved from our seats up the very top and we went to their section. We had, a, they had a little standing bar there. So we stood there the whole, the whole event, but it was cool, man. I got to fucking do WrestleMania and, and see it all with my best friend. You know, he was a couple rows down. We were fucking going nuts for matches and, everything it was just it was emotional you know it was it was it was awesome you know there was everything that main event came on fucking everyone was going loud for cody's fucking entrance i mean you can hear it if you rewatch it man we fucking went nuts both nights man the energy is unlike anything i've ever experienced i think you, you only can get this energy at big events like this and you know, Roman hits the one, two, three after all that shit. I'm fucking pissed off. I'm fucking yelling. I'm like, there's no way this fucking ends like this. Fucking bullshit. This was Cody's fucking match. Fuck this. Fuck WWE. Fuck you, Vince. Like, I was just pissed. You know, like any fucking WWE fan was. Because, you know, you got to imagine this, this storyline as well as the Bloodline storyline. These are two storylines that have been in the mix for about a year now. Yeah, Cody was away for some time. But when he came back, the story was continuing. The story needed to be finished the story of him winning that championship for his dad for his family for his legacy was on the line you know it was it was emotional because you know you had cody's legacy on the line and you had roman's 1000 day title reign on the line so it you, there, as a wrestling fan this was the first time i could not predict this match you know it could have gone one of two ways you know like it could have been the, the dethroning of roman or as the finish we got, it was Roman still coming up on top. Um, so, you know, it, it was just, it was a vibe. It was fun. It was great. I had a great time. <sighs> but the long, enjoyable weekend really got ruined the next night on Raw. I, uh, for the longest have heard that the raw after mania was the biggest raw of the year. And I've seen it, you know, I've watched it for many years and it, 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 it was supposed to be, you know, this was the raw where like AJ said, you had debuts, you had returns. Um, you had people coming over from the Indies, you know, you had all these fucking people, surprises and whatnot coming out championship opportunity, championship defenses, you know, with the intercontinental champion or the United States champion at the very least, I thought they were for sure going to give Ray a United States championship match. They didn't. Um, there were so many missed opportunities within this show that they could have capitalized on, uh, Rey Mysterio championship match could have happened, but I thought it was great to set up the bad bunny, uh, judgment day feud for, uh, backlash in Puerto Rico. Um, but like 
Bobby Lashley segment. I was really hoping someone would come up and, and fight him. I was hoping maybe Wyatt would come back and introduce the Wyatt six or something like that. Um, the rumored wired six, I can't even confirm that one yet. Um, and then Owens and Zayn, I was hoping DIY came out, you know, we haven't seen Tommaso champ in a while and they've been kind of under using, um, fucking what's his name. Johnny Gargano. So I was hoping we we're going to get DIY union and they were going to do a tag title match or something like that or set up that feud. Um, Rhea Ripley coming out and doing her promo was bad. The thing that I, I, I found the worst, and you're seeing this a lot on the internet now, and I saw this in person, Seth Rollins' segment um, was changed midway through that show before they got back from commercial break. You've, there's been videos about it all over WrestleMania, but I did, I, I, I did see him get pissed off midway through when production was telling him something. And I was like, fuck, dude. And then when he came out and just did his thing, I was like, that's it? Really? Yeah. Like, you couldn't have put a new wrestler over or something? That, that was a perfect opportunity for a return right there. I thought Randy was going to come back for Cody, you know? That would have been a really cool reunion right there, a legacy reunion. Um, you know, Matt Riddle coming out, I was all right. You know, that was cool. It was good to see him again, but... Where's AJ Styles? Where's Shinsuke Nakamura? Where's Big E? You know, where's all these people at, dude? Like, I know they've been injured, but <laughs> it's been about a year since Big E. I mean, he was recovering from a broken neck, but that's been yeah. about a year now. He should be okay now. That you know what I mean? That shit was crazy. But that shit was gnarly, yeah. Um, but overall, just very disappointed. I walked away pissed off more than anything because I could tell immediately this was a Vince show. And... I, when I went home and read on Twitter and watched all my wrestling news, I was like, fuck, dude, he's back. And and which segues way, segue into why WWE might be in trouble. It's bad. And yeah. Vince is like, you guys done talking about wrestling? No, I'm just, I'm trying to like absorb. I'm honestly, I was waiting for you to talk about the boy Pat McAfee, but you just kind of. Oh, bro. Let me okay, tell you cool. about. Okay, so I got it. Here's our bridge with Vincent. Yes. Pat McAfee. There's Have a- you seen the video Sammy put on his social media when Pat McAfee came out? I know I have not yet. You need to go on Sammy's Instagram, his personal one, and look at his reaction because he is one of the biggest Pat McAfee fans in the world. He, he <laughs> listens to his show every single day. You know, he got me into Pat McAfee. I didn't like him when he first broke into WWE, but I started liking him after after seeing him <laughs> fucking get down to Shinsuke's music and stuff. Um, but. He it. lost his voice. Yeah, he lost his voice because of that on day one. And when I met up with him after day one, uh, on the outside of SoFi, uh, he fucking his voice sounded worse than mine, <laughs> and it was hilarious, man. It, it was great. He loves Pat. That was a great surprise, man. Um, didn't know who the guy was that that helped him. I know I did later find out he was someone from the 49ers. Yeah, he's the 49ers tight end. But I don't watch football, so you know. I'll show you a tight end. What? Huh? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Pat was cool. Uh, Shane O'Mac came back, got injured. That was fucking hilarious. Dude, Shin, like McMahon fashion, his tradition: yeah. show up, pull, pull a quad, then leave. He have you seen the footage of him actually like fucking landing and fucking twisting his ankle, bro? It was bad. He landed on his feet, then he just went to the ground. <laughs> yeah, it was bad, bro. He um, he tore his quad. But fucking shout out to Snoop Dogg, bro, because. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I was watching the press conference with Triple H after that night. He took control, yeah. Well, it was all, like, it wasn't scripted. Like, he he did all that on the spot, and the ref and the fucking Miz, they fucking just went along with it, and so did Corey Graves. Everyone, like, everyone just went along with it. Like, that Like that was Snoop Dogg just thinking on the spot to keep the, to keep the show going, you know what I mean? So Was, was Snoop, like, a part of WrestleMania? Like, or like, he was, yeah. He was co-hosting with the Miz. Yeah, okay, because... So, so, like, he was already there and didn't just... Yeah, because like, last year when they had... Let me, let me Snoop Dogg it up out here. Well, ha- last year when they had the press conference to announce that WrestleMania would be coming to Los Angeles, he was one of like the kind of big people that they invited out. Yeah, ambassadors to come yeah. out. And they even gave him his own sense. custom title belt. And I don't know if you've been hearing the controversy of all these different celebrities having his fucking title belt all around the world. And then it finally got back to him at WrestleMania. Um, so, yeah, they made him this big old Snoop Dogg custom WWE title belt, which looks fucking bitching. Um and every time he would leave and every time he'd come out, I'd be like, well, he's going to go back and smoke like seven more joints and then come back out and do it all over again. <laughs> um, but homie, dude, it was funny because he fucking gifted Michelle McCool and The Undertaker death row fucking necklaces. I'm like, let's go, Snoop. Fucking death row lives, bro. That was so funny to me. I'm like, do you really think The Undertaker fucking listens to anything death row? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> 
<laughs> you see him in the fucking in the back fucking bumping fucking uh what is it um the chronic and shit <laughs> hey man uh it was great it was a fun weekend um i think honestly like if i never went to a wrestling event again in person i would be okay with that and it's not just because how disappointed i was with monday night raw but it was just because leading up to all this i've always wanted to go to wrestlemania i finally got to go to wrestlemania and now that i've done it i just it's not that I'm not going to stop watching the the stuff because it honestly, that's what helps me get by my week. And, you know, I, I look forward to wrestling every single week. And yeah. as much as, as pissed off as I am of Vince, I'm, I'm, I'm still going to watch the product to see how fucking downhill it goes. But I will say this. I have started getting back into AEW again, only in the sense of, oh, fuck, it's going to, it's going to fucking, I, it's not that I never lost track of AEW. I would keep track of like certain storylines, like anything with MJF I kept track of. Cause I thought, I think he's one of the greatest kayfabes of all time. Um, the, the like in, in our generation, you know, and fucking, you know, I like creeping out of the uh, a Blackpool uh, Combat Club. I like uh, Chris Jericho, you know. So yeah, you know, I, I was catching up with some AEW stuff today, but I I'm gonna keep an eye out on WWE to see where they go with Vince back in creative now. For sure. With that being said, breaking news: Triple H will be on SmackDown tomorrow to address the WWE uh, universe. That is factual. Yeah. Hey guys, dad's home. Um, you guys all need to go back home. My dad's my dad's back, and I gotta go to bed now. Listen, if you ever want to get into to wrestling, I'm sure either myself or Anthony can help you with with that. Give you all what you need. Vincent barely goes on TikTok. You think nice. he's got time to watch wrestling? That's nice terrible. little starter kit. When I become a professional wrestler, I'll just have you and Jesse make my my mask. <laughs> I just want to be your manager. Did like, you have me and Sammy as your managers. Right, your <laughs> cool. uh, did you guys see Immortal's new uh, new mask? No. no. It's a uh, uh, look it up right now. It's a uh, it's the it's called Luchador, but it's it's like a lucha libre like. Aka, excuse me. Yeah, check mm-hmm. it out. It it looks really cool. They're uh, doing like a bunch of different like paint variants and stuff with it. He right now. said. Aka, excuse me. Did they post it on their Instagram? Uh, yeah. It, it, I think they, it, it's been out for like a oh, couple shit, weeks. Man. I'll tell you this. Immortal's just Lucha waiting for fucking. Fuck, that Immortal so- Mask, I could tell you this. They're just waiting for fucking Mickey Mouse to become public domain. <laughs> Dude, that's They're sick. just waiting for it, bro. I can't wait to see what they come up with on that one. I know they're going to come up with yeah, something. Yeah, hometown of Los Angeles. So in honor, we are releasing another new Luchador. Another new Luchador. Series. Is it like a fucking spooky yeah. one? Oh, yeah. Check it out. It's it's like... It's on the Instagram? Yeah. Oh, okay. We got one in, but in purple. Purple. Yeah, they... Uh, they it's like one of they just announced it today or what just because it's uh oh they got orange too so the cool. orange looks sick I like the where skin the fuck tone. am i supposed to look you just you gotta scroll they they post a lot right we, oh okay okay i see, it, I see it. Have over like 200 ma- like masks alone over like a thousand different variants of them is there just like a wall of molds there when you go to the fucking shop there's aisles of molds oh, just molds dude this Lucha Libre one is dope. You is know what kind of remind cute? you know what kind of reminds me of? Did you guys watch the David Harbour version of Hellboy, which I think is very underrated? I loved it. Was that the newer Sorry. one? Yeah, yeah. The, the one that was actually more loyal to comic books. I did not. Don't get me wrong. Guillermo del Toro and Ron Perlman's Hellboy is fucking legendary. No one can ever take that away from them. But um, anyway, there's a scene in the beginning that they they reference um, Hellboy in Mexico. And in that comic book, he fights a fucking he fights one of his what, what was his best friend, um, but he becomes like a fucking um, he becomes a a fucking demon because he gets fucking like bitten or something like that. And he's he's in a luchador outfit, and the fucking face that Immortal made from this kind of looks similar to that because he's in the fucking lucha libre mask and everything. So that's cool. That cool. He, when they sh- they shot the promo video for like the website, and they uh, put on the muscle suit too. So, so you had just I this massive yoked out muscle suit with the Lucha Lucha Libre mask. It, it was perfect. It looked weird. <laughs> I was watching that video with the black mask. Yeah. That was, that Dude, was fun to watch. 
I uh, if you if you at least get a chance, you don't have to watch the whole Hellboy movie, but at least watch that scene on YouTube, man. That scene is fucking awesome. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll see. Sure. He said, "I'll see. I'll see. See what my see what my schedule lands." We'll see. I'll see if I can pencil that in real quick. <laughs> Between like the speaking of fucking the watching movies, have y'all seen the menu? I have not yet. I've wanted to see. I want to go see. Oh. It. it looks interesting. Is it is dude? It, is it out of theaters now? It's on. It's I just I, I bought it recently uh, digitally. It's on digital. You can rent it and shit now. Is it on a uh, uh, like Peacock or HBO? I don't know if it's on any streaming service yet. I can look it up. But um, let me look and that up. A1? Like, dude, a one. It is fucking amazing, bro. Sauce. Beautiful. Not to mention, if you're a fan of fucking uh, what's his name, the guy who plays Voldemort. Oh, Ray, uh, Ray uh, Fiennes? Ralph Fiennes? Yeah, dude, he is fucking. It's hard to say. It's a very oh, it's on. If you have HBO Max, it's on HBO Max. Perfect. Yeah. Um, gang gang. Gang gang. <laughs> It just I I just all I saw was HBO Max subscription. <laughs> like there you go, beautiful. Um, so yeah, put that on your watch list. It is I. It was one of those movies where I could I was not paying attention to my phone. My girlfriend was talking to me, and we were kind of just figuring it out. Like, oh, this person's doing that, or that's gonna happen, or this is about to happen, and shit. And then fucking curveball. And I was it's like, funny. huh? Uh, knives out. The first time I saw it, I still gotta watch Glass Onion. It's cool. <laughs> I started, I got like halfway through it. I, I got through the scene, and this is in the trailer, so it's not a spoiler, uh, where that, that person, there's someone that gets shot, and then all the family come out, and one at a time, and he's starting to turn, and he starts seeing them all one at a time, and he's starting to list his suspects and shit. It was like an outdoor scene. That's how far I got. Yeah. So, um, it's good. Yeah. It's fun. Um, the menu, fucking mind-blowing. I mean, the cinematography, the the score, just all the actors in general, like, just mind-blowing, dude. It's such a fucking good movie. Um, and it, it's so nuts to see the shit that it progresses as it goes on. Like, I, I, you know, there's so much I could talk about, but it would just be spoilers. Just, it, just know going into it... Uh, Everything is not what it seems. Beautiful. As I'd hope most mysteries are. And there's always that one odd person that doesn't fit with the group. Interesting. Okay. So that's what I'm going to leave you with. Uh, maybe uh, if we do an episode next week, because we're going to have a special guest on next week. I just can, I can confirm that right now. Are we? Are you sure? Because uh, wasn't that supposed to happen? We were supposed to have it, and the, and the special guest that we were supposed to do it in person um, got busy. So uh, I finally just texted him as we were What's doing him? the show. It is a him. Give us some hints. You both know him. I know who it is. You've both scared oh, with hold him. Hold on. If Vincent knows, why don't I know? I think we talked I, about it uh, when I reestablished my lead for most most recurring guest. <laughs> You've scared with him. I can tell you that. I can promise you that. Is it fucking? Why am I blanking on his name right now? Vertigo? No, no. He's not in Ghost Town. <laughs> oh, so okay, okay. I haven't even really scared with Vertigo either. Uh, is it Matt? It would take a fucking miracle to get him on the podcast, so no. That man doesn't like to talk. Fair. No, he likes to talk. He just doesn't like to talk on camera. Ah, yeah. Fair. Is it Dustin? No, but <laughs> if you guys want to hit up <laughs> Dustin after this episode, uh, feel free to because he's got an open he's, invite. He's been, he's been on before. Yes, this person been has on been on before. before. Uh, I think I, I want to say we've done three podcasts with him. This would be number four for him. He's a huge fan of what we do. Literally, his message replied, I said, you free next Thursday for you guys, absolutely. That could be anybody. Hold on. <laughs> Look, um, is it Lucio? Do you want a hint? Yes. No, but he is friends with Lucio. They're, they're no longer in Ghost Town. Is it Vi? Okay. No. no. <laughs> that, was, that was a sneaky hint that I gave. But I, I will say this, and this will probably give it away right here. Last, uh, 2021 was his final year. It's always a party. Is it Aaron? It's Aaron. 
<laughs> all right fuck that took for fucking ever it really did i was uh yeah so aaron frames join us on shoot the shit listen though it's aaron next thursday <laughs> dragging me along <laughs> I can guarantee you I, I need to put some time aside for that podcast because it's probably going to be an easy, like, two- to three-hour podcast. Oh, definitely. Um, for sure. Um, so that's what you got to look forward to next week. Are we doing shit, Thursday? Shit. Next Thursday we will be recording. Um, and as far as the episode goes, I don't know when it will be out, but it will be out. It will yeah. be out eventually. I hope I hope this footage came out good because I don't know how this is going to look afterwards. This is the first time I'm using this. Everybody. Hey, we'll see. Hey, we will. Uh, yeah, that we will. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I always enjoy talking to you guys. I really do. I, yeah. I do look forward to when we get, can get together. I know we it, it, it is sometimes some weeks are better than others. Some weeks I'm just super fucking tired or super fucking busy or some weeks, you know, AJ's super busy. It's, hard, it's hard to coordinate like three different schedules, but I, it I is say that we've done a pretty good job for like we all go through our mental health days as well. We all have mental health get- days back to it and like we all yeah we all have like really rough days and it is difficult coordinating between three very busy individuals um but we get it done and we get back to it and as long as as we get back to it we'll be fine yeah every time you say four and not just you but like anytime someone says back to it i just picture negan like back to it yeah just so back to it back to it (laughs) glenn's dead wait what spoiler (laughs) What? What? Say, what do you mean? You know what's funny? Right. And like I, I, I only realized it when I decided to rewatch the series is Glenn, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't watched The Walking Dead or plans to, uh, Glenn gets taken out by being beaten to death by Negan's baseball bat. Mm-hmm. First time Glenn meets Maggie, she Hits the shit out of a walker with a baseball bat right in front of him. Foreshadowing. Oh, for sure. And if you've read the comics, you already know. And I guess it happens a lot sooner in season seven. Aaron Frame said, works for me. Perfect time to hit the gym and get home. That (laughs) fucking stud. (laughs) He is ideally, he's like the bionic man. Glenn? Shut up. No, Aaron. Oh, Aaron? Yeah. He, he can go. He, he can I, go. Homie's, I, like, I'm getting, I homie's like, I'm getting too old for this. I'm like, homie, you look better than me, and you are older than me. You look in way better shape than I do. I'm like, what do you mean you're getting too old for this? No one yeah. said you had to fucking use your knees and slide, bro. All you got to do is run and just hit the scare and bam. It is physically taxing, Um, but I feel like... He loves it. He loves the event. He and it's, he it's clear and evident when he goes out there, and it's it's awesome to see him do his thing. And I'm super excited to have him on. Yeah, that's what I saw him was the banquet. The he banquet. I see, right? He what? He did he yeah, make see whiskey? He did. Uh, like outside of Nashville, kind of right? I think it's illegal to drink there. You know that, right? It's illegal a, or legal? Drink? I think it's a uh, the county? the county the county surrounding. The, Ironically, the county surrounding the Jack Daniels distillery is a dry county. I'm like, what? If I live, I'd be like, what kind of bullshit is this, bro? I have the best whiskey in the world down the street from me. I can't even drink it. I kind of find that I like. I don't. That's kind of funny to me. Like, I guess they got a license so they can serve alcohol on their property, but only on their property. Well, yeah, but like I was, I was just gonna say, like in California, like I don't, I don't think there's any dry counties in California. I don't think oh, that's no. like a well, no, because if you go south of the border, it's fucking it's beer and and you know hard liquor. If you go uh, if you go up top north of the border, it's fucking wine country. In in good old Canada. Well, in North Canada? California, Northern California, Vincent. Northern California, Canada. <laughs> well, you said north of the border, so I that like north of the, oh, the border, border of California. <laughs> I'm surprised when I said south of the border, you're gonna be like Mexico. I'm so confused. Okay, is, that what, is that not what you were talking about? No, I was talking about San Diego, bro. <laughs> well, okay, what border are you talking about? There's no border. There's like a county line. <laughs> There's a border in San Diego that goes to fucking Mexico. Have you yes, never been to San Diego and seen that border? <laughs> but south, yeah, I've been to Mexico. South of the border is Mexico. It is south of the border. North of the border is above. <laughs> 
the United States, which is good old Canada. Yeah, yeah. You were talking about what state? What state were you talking about? California, correct? The way you said Canada. Yeah, no, Canada is how you say it. If you if you like, look at the talk to the native, talk to the indigenous people there, Canada is how you how you actually are supposed to say Canada the country. Side track, when so that's why when you were like, yeah, if you go north, you get it's all wine country. I thought you were gonna make a joke about like maple syrup or something. <laughs> Why? I like Canada. They haven't done anything bad to me. I fucking love Canada. I love Canadians, bro. Some of my favorite wrestlers are Canadians. There's a song all about blaming Canada. Yeah, it's South Park did it. <laughs> wow. Are South we, Park are we Park shocked Park? there? <laughs> oh, my God. God damn. We better end this episode before we start a riot. <laughs> that was good. A riot? <laughs> Big shout out to Betty Boop right here. This is a, an actual cigarette from the Goring 20s. A cigarette? What's that? Goring 20s or the cigarette? The cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, we do exist in a time before the 20s, so. In the 20s! Uh, ghost. Go- ghost. <sighs> All right, boys. Well. It's been fun. It's been real, but it's fun and fun real. Fun real. Yeah. Fun real. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, before we log off, I know this episode will come out after this, but you guys have a great Easter weekend. Thank you. Um, you well. Enjoy. Enjoy. Relax. You know, have a good time. <laughs> um, God bless your soul. Don't, Satan don't bless hurt. your soul. Don't let any of your friends, uh, you know, betray you tonight. T- tonight's the night. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, Vincent. <laughs> what is tonight, by the way? The Last Supper. Well, like not tonight. That already happened. But like, you know, you know the story. No, that would that would actually that would be tonight. That would be tonight because tomorrow is the day that you know. Tomorrow night, out. Judas is taking me to go see Nine Inch Nails. Judas, no. <laughs> oh, I brought oh, you Frankenstein. I'm sorry. I, I brought you Mur. Murder. I completely forgot that um, a certain somebody's character's name is Judas. That's me. Oh, it's you. I have my secrets, and I and I, I I'll sell them out. <laughs> <laughs> I sold I I sold them for thirteen cigarettes. Thirteen. I watched this man fucking kill a werewolf. What happened? Oh yeah. I, wa- I watched. I watched you kill a werewolf. Three. three Did. Four. Four years ago now. Well, three and a half, but it's insane. And the only guy who's got it on tape. Did you guys see when she got me? No. Yeah. We didn't make it a big thing. I think it was just like on the fly. She she stabbed out all my jelly. She just went jelly. She, she took my knife and cut out all my jelly. Just oh. jelly all over the floor. Good. It was awesome. <laughs> like boysenberry or yeah. Was it really boysenberry jelly? Poison? No, it wasn't. It was just she murdered me pretty good. Oh. Um, nobody saw, or like the only few people. But did where did this murder happen? Like right at the. At the did they record it? By the post office. Oh. Like well, I like guess. sort of more towards. Eh, it's hard to explain. Someone recorded it's that though, right? Huh? Was it was it closer to the windmill or closer to the? Indian? Someone recorded that, right? Closer to the post office, but across from the little um, funnel cake store. Little funnel, funnel cake corner. Oh, oh, right by by, like where the. The first planner the closed, on the, left. the closed entrance to the general store. Yeah, yeah, that one. Gotcha. Right there. She murked me. Um, I wish it was kind of more cool. Like, wait, I wish it was a little bit cooler. Like, she had claws, but she took my knife and stabbed me with it, which is like kind of like poetic, you know? But like, mom. here's my character pitch. You ready for my character pitch? I'm ready. Okay. Ghost Town Tumbleweed. <laughs> Ghost Town Towers. The ghost town tree. The ghost town. Fucking boots wanted to be a tree, but they were all like, no, you'll want to be on stilts and it's too scary. But then like, like motherfucker, I don't need stilts. I am stilts. Could you imagine just like him posting up as a tree and like you just kind of being like unsuspecting and suddenly this fucking giant tree just moves across fucking fog alley. I just starts running after you. I'd be like, oh shit, Groot. I just want your entire costume to be like a ghillie suit and just like you just. There used to be, I remember back in the day, like 2013, 2012, I remember seeing a ghillie suit by Indian Trails in front of that wall right there. It was probably John Cook. 
That's <laughs> awesome. It probably was. I probably got scared <laughs> by John Cook. Didn't even know it at the time. In, uh, in Necropolis. Um, he got a lot of people with that. I and my my friend Aaron, another Aaron, uh, wanted to be luchadors mm-hmm. in Fiesta. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we were gonna carry around a uh, a dirty old mattress and like suplex each other on it. <laughs> Hell yeah! We were gonna be. I was gonna be Bro Macho, and he was gonna be Bro Mijo, and we were gonna be Los Bro Migos. <laughs> and it was like this really cool fucking bit. We're like, it it turned out to be really fucking sick. And we were in Carnival at the time, and we're like, are we really gonna go to Fiesta Village for one year to do this shit? And then it was like, oh, Fiesta Village is going is gone now. We're like, oh. Like, oh. Okay, I guess. <laughs> All right, here's the here's the character pitch. You guys ready for this? All right. Ready. So the night of Sarah Marshall, um her curse started. Yeah. My character, uh, which goes by the name of Herbert. Herbert. Herbie. The thes- Herbert the Thespian. That's what he was known as because he was the man who would put on one man shows or put on, he'd be part of the town's local, uh, kind of set up. Yeah. A little vaudeville, you know, uh, one night while inside the, uh, what's that theater right there? Birdcage theater, birdcage theater. One night. I I remembered it. I caught it. I got it. (laughs) I remembered it. It came to me. It took a little bit. Uh, one night while rehearsing inside the birdcage theater, um, Right as the uh, curse goes out, um, it the, the the whole theater goes dark, and by that point, um, as he's coming in in character and everything, uh, the curse kind of gets to him and fucks with his head. Now the only thing he can fucking hear throughout the entire of him being cursed and whatnot is just fucking poets and, and all these playwrights and all these people that were like famous back in the day. All he can do is recite and hear their fucking, um, their work over and over again. And that's all, that's how, that's the only way he can communicate is through the works of others. Um, he's taken his craft so seriously that now he wants to, he wants to put on one of the greatest shows in the world. And in order to do that, he needs victims. Because there will be death, there will be murder. No there will be blood, but not fresh blood in Ghost Town. <laughs> yeah. No so, uh, yeah, Herbert the Thespian. I like it. And then I have like the, uh, the, pitch. the then I have the Gator Hunter. The Gator Hunter. Because I'm 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 going back to Knotts' roots before it was a theme park. I'm talking when they had the Gator Farm across the street. Ooh. There was a gator farm across the street. Boom! You don't know your history, don't you, buddy? No, I don't. Cool so I would have, I would have threw you off guard with that fucking character. You'd be like, "What is this even referencing?" And then I would have schooled you with some history. It like, would be uh, pretty cool to have like a trapper or like a Why hunter. Do you want to be a character? alligator? I'm gonna be a ghost town alligator. Just walk around even... with all these different pelts on you. Like, don't don't keep it to gator. Keep it to like animal hunter. Like, I've always had this really cool. Like, it'd be really fucking sick. If there was this human, just random fucking human, that somehow was not affected by Marshall's curse, and is sort of trying to survive, here's here's a, a I'm gonna I'm gonna steal your pitch and add to it. Okay. It's a man who's heard le- who's heard the tales, the legends of this happening in Calico. Is it the mailman? No. <laughs> Where are these? Are you sure? I think so. <laughs> where I got he's, mail. He's heard these stories happening. So, and he's an he's an avid hunter, and he hears these these great beasts that arise from the, the ground and this and that. So he comes to to become the number one hunter, and he hunts the monsters because they are the most dangerous game. Kind of get a little craven, craven the. And then every time I come out, fucking boom! Time to play the game. <laughs> Could you imagine if like every monster had its own entrance theme? <laughs> I would love to see it because I would love to see. AJ, what what, what would your walkout music be? Why can't we be friends? <laughs> I'm kind of down. Da- I listen. I might have to um, cut this. I might have to cut this part because what I'm about to say could get everyone in trouble, including myself. 
I'm kind of yeah. down to bring a speaker one night and just play fucking music as you guys are scaring. Just for what do you want for a song, real quick? Well, see if, if someone you, comes, someone slides to Cena, I'd fucking laugh my ass. If off. you pay attention and you and you listen to specific monsters, sometimes there's there's a couple people that run around singing as they scare. <laughs> and are they singing Slipknot lyrics? They they might be um they sometimes you'll hear people singing or yelling out like a shopping list at a grocery store (laughs) um you just there's a lot of things that happen in the fog you just you gotta pay attention you gotta be in the know oh i am you see where i sit you gotta look for the easter eggs (laughs) what do you think i do every movie i watch (laughs) marvel has laid upon a curse on me (laughs) <laughs> all right uh if you guys enjoyed today's episode of shoot the shit make sure to smash that like button and uh go show some support on social media all of our socials are linked down below go check us out we love you check out our merch store as well we got some uh uh insane designs right now so go check them out i'm wearing pretty much all nights of horror gear right now except this carnival hat um uh, yeah where's your ghost town hat hey bro i have it I got really confused because I was like, I don't have any merch, but then I realized that the night before has merch. <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute, what's the merch? Like this amazing shirt of me having Sammy's head, and I look like Eddie from Iron Maiden. Me Go sure. check that out. Um, but uh, without any further ado, uh, we'll see you guys next week for our special guest star, Aaron Frame. See you, see ya. See ya.